Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about scaling components. Seems simple enough, right? Like everything else in SketchUp, you can select it, hit the scale button, and you can scale a component. Um, true, 100% true. You can do that. But because of the nature of components, components are all connected together. So copies of the same component share the same data. So if you change one component, the rest change. That's the whole point of components is that you have one chair in your dining room and you modify it and all the chairs get changed. The issue is that depending on where and when you use scale, it's going to change whether or not the copies scale. And that's where some sometimes people get hung up on this and get confused. So I figured it's a great opportunity to hop in and do some learning. Let's take a look. All right, so I have a couple different entities here. Um, over here, we're gonna start simple. We're gonna start with, Sri is a component, by the way. We're not gonna mess with her, but but uh, just so you know, Sri is a component. So if you were to take a copy of Sri and put it across here and then edit one, they would all change. So just FYI. And what I mean by that is here, here I have two components right here. So you can see solid component. They're listed down here in my components window. It's a house shape. So if I come in here and I do something like I delete this face, the face of the copy is going to delete too. I'm going to undo that because I don't want to necessarily get rid of it. Now, here's the thing about scaling. If I was to select one of these two copies, you see as I click between these, the, the definition is the same, right? So here's, here's three, here's house shape, house shape number two, and they are the same. So if I was to come in here and do something like pull this out 12 inches, you see, both copies do that. Makes sense, right? Now, if I was to select that same thing, hit scale and scale it up, look what happens. I release it and this one scaled, this one didn't. Why is that? Because what I scaled there was the container. I scaled the outside, the copy of it, right? So this one and this one now look different, even though they're still the same definition. So if I look at this one right here, if I was to right click on it, I'd get this reset scale option. If I click right here and I say, oh, resets turned off. So let's see what happens when we do that. The other thing I get right here is scale definition. Let's see how these two things work. So I'm gonna hit reset scale and see what happens. Okay, it puts it back to the default scale of the content on the inside. All right, let's take that and let's scale it up again. And then what happens if we right click and we choose scale definition instead? Scale definition. Now, if I come in here, see these two separate pieces, if I right click over here and I hit reset scale, guess what's gonna happen? <gasps> it goes up. So I know, let's do that again. Let's do that all again, right? Okay, so I'm gonna undo, get back here. Okay, let's take this piece right here and I'm gonna scale it, stretch it this way. So right now, these are the same. This is deformed. This is the standard. But if I right click here and I say scale definition, what ends up happening is they kind of swap. So scale definition, now this is the standard scale and this one is squashed rather than this one being stretched. So if I right click on this one and I hit reset scale, it'll make it look like this one. See, it stretches it out to match the original definition. So I have the ability as I change scales of items to choose one of them to be the new standard and I can make other ones follow or vice versa. I can swap which one is the original and I can uh, change that. So this is a nice option to have. Um, I would recommend if you do want to use scale on something, you want all of them to be the same, of course, make sure you come into context, select all and then scale there, right? So if I go with this, you should be able to see the copies scale. That's, that's, a, that's kind of a key thing. So let's take an example of that. So right here, I have uh, a cube component and a cylinder component. Right here, it's just a copy of each. You can see right here, cube component, cylinder component. And then right here, I have a component that has one of each inside of it. Same thing over here. These are, this is called cube and a cylinder, cube and a cylinder. If I double click in, my cube component, my cylinder component. And you can see this one over here is lighting up as I do it because it is a copy of the exact same component. Now. Let's talk about some stuff. If I was to double click into the cylinder and I was to triple click and scale, they would all scale, right? This is this is what we just saw. Same thing over here at this cube. If I double click in here, 
select all this scale, I would see all of them scale. That makes sense. And likewise, if I click out of the component and I grab this and I hit scale, I'll scale this, but nothing will happen to the other ones, again, as we expected. Now, what happens if I enter this component, which is a copy of both? So I come in here and I would pick this one and I hit scale and let's just scale it along like this. Whoa, so this one grew. Well, why did this one grow and this one didn't? Because what happened was I scaled the definition or I scaled the, the, the container and that container is copied in this larger component. See that? So the original didn't change, the container changed, but because that container was inside of a copied component, I know we're inceptioning right here, but because that was inside, it scaled. So again, if I was to come into this one right here and scale it, this copy that's in another component would scale. If I was to triple click, select all and scale, then all of the copies, including the one outside, get scaled. And then we have the same option here where I can come in here, if I double click in here, right click, um, oops, oh, 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 too much clicking. Um, when I click this one, I have the option of resetting or scaling the definition, just like we did out here, uh, because this was a deformed container, even though it was inside of this component. So this component itself never actually changed, right? So we didn't change either of these. So if I was to grab scale and now scale this container, now I have the option of resetting scale or scaling definition on, on well, on this one. And if I was to reset scale, I could do that same thing, scale this definition back down. So kind of, this is a strange one to think about, but if I look at this, every one of these, here, let's do, let's make this a little bit, uh, let's make this like this. And I can say that every one of these, this, this, and this are all the same component. Every cylinder here is the same component, even though they're different sizes, different lengths, but they're all the same component because of the way distorting components works. So how can this, what, 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 how do you apply this practically? Well, over here, we looked at how we could come in here and I could scale something and then have these still be the same too. So why is that good? Well, if I come in here, if I was to, uh, I don't know, say I wanted to put some brick siding on here, I could do that once and it would happen to all of them. Of course, my horizontal dimension bricks are going to get squashed a little bit, but still, that's, that's kind of, they're still the same component knowing that if at any time I wanted to, I could reset the scale or scale the definition to make them match again. So if I wanted this to be the original, again, just reviewing this, let's scale that and I come in here, I could say reset scale and they'll, they'll go back to matching. So it is good to know that that happens. In something like this, uh, the big question comes, well, how do I know what happened? What's the original? How do I get it back to where it was? So if I click on here and it says scale definition, that means I know that uh, as opposed to this one, I click on this one, oh, it's all the same. So if I was to come in here and set scale definition, it would say make this the standard. But right now, because reset scale is showing up, I know that it's not the standard. So if I hit reset scale, it'll go back to that original scale. Likewise, if I come in here, I can select and reset scale of my cube. I can select reset scale of my cylinder, it'll put that stuff back, select right here. So these ones, uh, because I scaled up on the inside, are gonna stay the same size. But that's really the, the, the test is to right click on a component and see if you get the reset scale or scale definition. If you have reset scale, that means the original definition has been changed and you could jump to it. If you have scale definition, it means that a copy has changed and this could become the standard if you hit uh, scale definition. So there you go. Quick run through of how those scale pieces work. It's really not that difficult once you play with it, once you know what you're looking for, and once you know what you're doing, but initially it can catch you a little bit off guard. Uh, the, like I said, the big rule of thumb would be no, pay attention to whether you're scaling the component or you're, com you're scaling the geometry inside a component because that is what's going to change uh, how the rest of them work. But there's always a way back with those right uh, options in the context, that right click menu. That's not simple. 
straightforward. Sometimes it gets a little confusing. Uh, there's not an indicator on a component that has been scaled or changed uh, unless you right click on it in that context menu and see that text in there for reset or scale component. Um, if you do end up worst case, you have a bunch of copies and stuff gets screwy. Um, you can always reset. Uh, if, if you have stuff that's buried down deep, it can get tougher because you have multiple layers that could be scaled. Um, so it's, it's worth playing with, but, uh, just something to know, just pay attention to it more than anything. Just like, like anything in SketchUp, SketchUp will let you do whatever you want. You're in the driver's seat. You're the human. You're the one with the brain. SketchUp's going to do whatever you tell it to. You do have this, this great power does come with some responsibility. You do have to pay attention to what you're scaling, when you're scaling it and where you're scaling it. Is it inside another component? That sort of thing. But if you do that, uh, easy enough to back out if you do get caught up. Hopefully that helps. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week. And you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, they'll leave us a comment down below. Have you been tripped up by this? Do you have a different way of evaluating your components for scale? Or do you have an idea for a video of something that we haven't shown or that you're struggling with? Let us know any of that down in the comments. We like making these videos a lot. We'd like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.